Journeys of Hope, life is a journey, and this is your spiritual passport. Where will the journey take us today? Let's walk together as we learn to become people of faith and hope. Welcome to Journeys of Hope. I'm Mary Jane Fox, your host for today's journey. And I'm Deacon Tom Fox. Mary Jane and I are co-founders and co-directors of Pilgrim Center of Hope, where we are recording at St. Joseph's Studio. Pilgrim Center of Hope, producer of this weekly radio and podcast program, is a nonprofit ministry founded in 1993 with a mission of guiding people to walk in hope with Christ and the church. We invite you each week to walk with us as we discover the richness of our Catholic Christian faith, as we learn more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and receive spiritual insights on living our Christian faith each day. Yes, this journey of hope is a journey to a place where Mary, the mother of God, appeared in a small town named Fatima in Portugal. Fatima is the heart of Portugal. It's around 70 miles north of Lisbon. Portugal is a small country. The mainland of Portugal extends like 349 miles from its north to south borders and about 135 miles across from west to east. It's bordered by Spain on the east and on the west, the Atlantic Ocean. But what happened there in May of 1917 changed that town and millions of lives. Mary, the mother of God, appeared to three young children and gave them messages to give to us, to the entire world. But why would Mary appear in such a small town, in a small country, to three young children at such very young ages? There were nine-year-old Francisco, his seven-year-old sister, Jacinta, and their 10-year-old cousin, Lucia. What were her messages to them? To us, how has her apparition transformed millions of lives? And so before we go into the explanation of that, this, this was during the, uh, the time of World War I, and Pope Benedict the, the uh, fifteenth repeatedly asked for peace. It seemed peace was so far away. In May of 1917, the Pope made a direct appeal to Mary, the Blessed Mother, asking her to intercede for peace in the world. Just over a week later, Our Lady began to appear in Fatima, Portugal, to the three shepherd children, Lucia dos Santos, age 10, her cousins, Francisco and Jacinta Marto, ages 9 and 7. The Fatima apparitions actually began in the spring of the pre- previous year, 1916, when an angel appeared to the children three times to prepare them for the meetings with Mary, the mother of God. It happened while the children were taking their parents' sheep out to graze. On this particular day in early spring of 1916, it began to rain, and the children hurried up the side of a hill to a little natural cave called Quebeco. There they finished playing their games, ate their lunches, and was custom all over Portugal. They knelt down to say the rosary together. Let me add that Catholicism was quite strong throughout Portugal at that time. Before the three children had finished the rosary, they felt a strong wind, and looking around, they noticed a strange light far out. That light came closer and closer to the place where they were kneeling, and finally it came to the very entrance of the little cave. There the light took the form of a young man. The angel told the children, Do not be afraid. I am the angel of peace. Pray with me. So that light became, it was an angel of God coming to the children. Well, what happened next was the, the angel knelt with his forehead touching the ground, and he gave the children the following prayer, asking them to repeat after him. And this is the prayer. I, My God, I believe, I adore, I trust, and I love thee. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not trust, and do not love thee. Three times the angel repeated that prayer. Pray this, said the departing angel. The hearts of Jesus and Mary are attentive to the voice of your supplication. Can you imagine that the angel would say these words to children? The hearts of Jesus and Mary are attentive to the voice of your supplication. And I'm sure they are as um, attentive to our supplication as well as we will soon learn. But twice more in that summer of 1916, the angel visited the children. The second time he came as they were playing near the old well behind Lucia's home. 
all of a sudden, without any warning, the angel appeared again, saying, Offer prayers and sacrifices to the Almighty God. Lucia, puzzled by these words, made bold, was very bold and asked the angel, But how? How shall we sacrifice ourselves? To which the angel answered, In everything you do, offer a sacrifice to God, make up for the sins by which God is offended. Above all, accept and endure with sub- submission the suffering which God will send you. That's a pretty powerful words, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, this reminds us of the words uh, from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, verses 20 through 21. If you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For this you have been called. Because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. The words of, and, and of course, uh, suffering is, uh, especially in our Catholic Christian tradition, has always been the uh, the center of our uh, of our relationship with Jesus, who said that we must deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Him. The cross has to always, as it was in the, the center of of our uh, salvation, it st- has to be the, the center of our ongoing life uh, because uh, it unites us with with Christ and and all that we do. Yeah. So the children, still puzzled of how to respond to the angels' plea, said, "But how can we suffer? We're not sick. We have enough to eat and a place to live." Francisco, one of the children, soon knew its meaning when his oldest brother went to join the army to fight in World War I. Even little Jacinta, depressed by the worry at home and the stories of death on the battlefield, as well as the trouble that had come to Lucia's family when her father began to spend all his money at the wine shops, little Lucia would stretch out her arms and cry out, Lord, we offer thee all these sufferings for the conversion of poor sinners. Even at that young age, they understood the message and, and how the, the, the trials that they endured could be beneficial to other souls. Right. And for them, the trials were the, 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 the sadness, the, the little mm-hmm. sufferings, you know, like Francisco's uh, brother going to war and Jacita hearing the stories. Can you imagine the stories of the neighborhood? I mean, people had uh, in that neighborhood of theirs and that little village Surely they had family members fighting in the war and they would be sobbing if one had died or they would tell the stories. And then, of course, Lucia's father had a, um, a, you know, a, a problem drinking. All this that they could relate to, it's true. Can we relate to this? I mean, perhaps, you know, we have family members serving in a military abroad in a place that may be in harm's way or a family member who is abusing drugs or alcohol. Or family or friends that have chosen paths and lives that are so far from a relationship with the true God. We can, we can offer the sufferings related to these things to God and his mother. They may not be able to, perhaps they may not know how, or perhaps they don't have, they don't pray, but we can pray on their behalf and we can offer, um, these sufferings that we're experiencing in our heart for, uh, for them. It's a lot to think about, really, and to ponder. Um, so well, as we continue with the story, toward the end of that summer, the angel came to them while they were praying in that spot called Cabego that you had mentioned earlier, Tom, in that little cave. In his hand, the angel held a chalice, and over it, a bleeding host. Mm-hmm. Now, we so, have to explain what, what is yeah, a, the so host. The host is the consecrated bread of the Eucharist, which is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. The word host comes to us from its Latin root, hostia, meaning a sacrificial victim. As Catholics, we refer to host, uh, the, we refer to host the, uh, sac- the sacrificed lamb who was risen and is present in the, ho- in the Holy Eucharist. It reminds us of the reality that Christ himself unveiled at the Last Supper when he said, this is my body, this is my blood poured out for you. Now the angel of peace held a chalice and a bleeding host above the chalice. Kneeling, he offered this heart-stirring prayer. 
Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I adore thee profoundly, and I offer thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences by which he is offended. By thy infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg of thee the conversion of poor sinners." Unquote. Then, giving the host to Lucia and the contents of the chalice to Francisco and Jacinta, he said, Take and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ, horribly outraged by ungrateful men. Make reparation for their crimes and console your God. Hmm. Reparation is a way to make atonement for offenses against God. In this case, if someone won't seek repentance for their offenses, we have a duty to ask for God's mercy on behalf of the un unrepentant. And, and that's one of the things that we, at every Mass that is prayed in, uh, every day throughout the whole world, we pray for in reparation uh, uh, for those who are far from God. So every, every Mass is, is one way that we participate in, in fulfilling this. But... Uh, we should we should also be aware that when we choose to do the things that were right, even the things that we find difficult because of our love for God, that makes that is a reparation. Mm -hmm. and And we all uh, have our own personal sins that, that need to be repaired. But as we, uh, as Mary has asked that we should pray for the conversion of sinners, there are millions of people throughout the world that have no idea of how they uh, of how their life away from God is uh, not only destructive for them but uh, but for other people and so we who do believe have to know that we can make reparation and we can help them in a way that only God knows uh, because no prayer is wasted and God will use our prayers for those who are, are most desperate okay. so we along with the children we can participate in, in reparation so these times that the angel appeared to the children were really a preparation um, meeting, so to say, uh, as the angel was preparing the children to receive the Blessed Virgin Mary. They did, they did not know that Mary was to appear to them. All they knew was that this angel of peace, as he introduced himself to these three little children, um, taught them these prayers and taught them and encouraged them to offer up their sufferings for the conversion of souls. So remarkable. So that was the last time that the children saw the angel of peace. Well, nothing more happened in the days that followed. The summer passed and winter came, then spring with its new life. And all that time, the children hoped that the angel of peace might return to them. But during that spring of May 17, 1917, the children had taken their flock um, of sheep out to the pasture in a small area known as the Cova de Area, which is in Portuguese. In English, it means Cove of Peace. They suddenly saw a bright flash of something similar to lightning, followed quickly by another flash in the clear blue sky. Well, they looked up to see. And well, these are Lucia's own words describing exactly what they saw. She said, a lady, clothed in white, brighter than the sun, radiating a light more clear and intense than a crystal cup, cup filled with sparkling water, lit by burning sunlight. That's how she described the, um, the lady. The lady smiled at the children, and these were her first words to them. Do not be afraid. I will not harm you. I come from heaven. She asked them to come to the Kova at the same hour on the 13th day for the next six months. Then she said, Are you willing to offer yourselves to God and bear all the sufferings He wills to send you as an act of reparation for the conversion of sinners? Well, Lucia, speaking for all three since she was the eldest, said, Yes. The lady replied, Then you are going to have to... Uh, have much to suffer, but the grace of God will be your comfort. Lucia recounted that at the same moment she opened her hands and streamed an, an immense light that penetrated each of their souls. The three fell to the ground and repeated a prayer that was communicated to them interiorly. The prayer was, 
O most holy Trinity, I adore thee, my God, my God, I love thee, in the most blessed sacrament. The lady then said to the children, Say the rosary every day to bring peace to the world and the end of the war. She then began to rise, moving towards the east, until she disappeared. That was the very first apparition on May 17th, 1917. And then the, the following month, on June 13th, 1917, there was about 50 people that turned up at the Corvo de Era at noon. I'm sorry, you know what? I said May 17th. I meant to say May 13th. Yeah. Because May 13th is really the day of Our Lady of Fatima that is celebrated not only in Fatima, Portugal today. As the first. Right. It's a very, so I, I can't believe I said the 17th, but it's the 13th. So it was the spring of May 13th, 1917. Yeah, May 13th is a very special day for me, too, because I was, I was born on May 13th. And it happened to be Mother's Day in that particular year. And I consider it a miracle in a sense that um, my mother w was pregnant with me. I, I was close to the time of my birth, and she, she had a uremic poisoning and was expected to die. She received the last rites, and then I was born on Mother's Day, May 13th. So <sighs> Our Lady has been uh, so special to me th uh, throughout my Right. Uh, my whole life. You're a true. Mar you're you're truly a son of Mary, Tom, and I'm so glad that Mary, uh, uh, through her intercession, healed your mom and brought you to life. Thanks mm -hmm. be to God. <laughs> so that was May 13th, 1917, that first apparition. And, and so the the second one is uh, June 13th, and it, and around 50 people turned up. The children saw a flash of light, followed immediately by the apparition of Mary, and as she spoke to spoke to Lucia, I want you to come on the 13th of next month, to pray the rosary every day and to learn to read. And later I will tell you what I want. She then opened her hands and radiated an immense light. In her right hand she held her heart encircled with thorns. And Lucia said she understood it was to be the Immaculate Heart of Mary in, in need of reparation. Then on uh, the following month, July 13th, the children assembled at the Cova and again saw Our Lady over the home oak tree. Mary told them again to come each month and said, Continue to pray the rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of war, because only she can help you. She promised in October that she would tell them who she was and for a, mir a miracle for all to s see and believe. Then she continued, sacrifice yourself for sinners and say many times, especially when you make some sacrifice, O Jesus, it is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And i just like to, you know, people may say, well, why were these little children uh, expected to sacrifice for the sins of of, uh, of so many uh, people of, of others. Yes. Why and, and and as the lady said that they would have to suffer much. Well, the reality is that these children were so were docile. They were already um, and as we know, they already were praying the rosary, but they accepted the the message perhaps as adult would not have. I mean, it's interesting that through many of the apparitions throughout the world, it's, it's been uh, through children or very humble, uh, very humble people that would be docile enough to receive the message. But the message was not only that the children should suffer, the message is for us that we all suffer. And our suffering has value, especially if we see it in light of the suffering of Christ and how our suffering can be for the benefit of others. Right, so, so in other yeah. words, to offer up our sufferings, right. when, and we all have some, some sort of suffering. Right, so then uh, she gives them a vision of hell. As she spoke these words, Mary opened her hands and rays of light from them seemed to penetrate the earth, revealing to the children a terrifying vision of, of hell full of demons and lost souls amid indescribable horrors. The children looked up to the sad face of the Virgin Mary, who spoke them, to them kindly. You have seen hell, where, soul, where the souls of poor sinners go. To save souls, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. If what I say to you is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. 
The war is going to end, but if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out during the pontificate of Pius XI. When you see a night illuminated by an unknown light, know that this is the great sign given you by God, that he is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine, and persecutions of the church and of the Holy Father. Before the apparition ended, she gave these final words. When you pray the rosary, say after each mystery, O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of salvation. So actually, in that apparition of July 13th, 1917, she said quite a bit um, and showed the children a vision of hell, which, of course, is a reality. Um, although some people may not believe in hell, that you can't change that it is real. And the fact that the prayer given to them, O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, that prayer that we pray after each decade of the rosary is where it comes from, that, that apparition and uh, to the children in July of 1917. As the, the apparitions continue, then she appeared in August, again, September and October. And just briefly to look at the one in August, because here um, the what happened was word got out, the secular press was uh, really being upset by, and other secular leaders were not receiving the message as being authentic. So the mayor, actually the mayor, kidnapped the children the morning of August the 13th, which was the time a lady would be appearing to the children, and started interrogating them and to convince them to tell the world and others that the apparitions were not true and for them to lie about the apparitions. Well, despite uh, his threats of death, can you imagine th threatening these children with death? They refused to comply, saying that they would rather die than to tell a lie. Of course, they encouraged one another, and the mayor finally released them on August the 15th. Well, it was later on August 19th when the children the children did see the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, in Valinhos, which is right outside Fatima. It was a different place. And she continued to uh, really stress the importance of praying the rosary. She said, pray, pray very much and make sacrifices for sinners, for many souls go to hell because they are not, no one to sacrifice themselves and pray for them. So it really reminds us of the power of prayer that, you know, it, Many saints through the centuries have said that if we pray for the conversion of souls, our prayer can be fruitful. We don't know exactly how, but God knows that he wants the prayer of our prayer from the heart to help others come to know him and receive peace and salvation. So by now, the children had thoroughly absorbed Mary's pleas for prayer and penance and did everything they, they did to answer those prayers. So here we come on the final apparition, October 13th, 1917. Yes, because in December, uh, in the December one, there it was just kind of a repeat of the previous one. Mm -hmm. But on uh, on October, the prediction of the public miracle caused intense speculation throughout Portugal. People from all parts of the, of the country descended by tens of thousands on the Cova. Uh, despite the terrible storm that lashed the mountain country around Fatima on the eve of the 13th. Many pilgrims walked barefoot, reciting the rosary as they went, all crowding into the area of the Kova. By mid-morning, heavy rains began to fall, and the mud was ankle-deep. The children reached the home oak around noon, and then saw the flash of light as Mary appeared to them. Lucia asked what she wanted. I want to tell you that a chapel is to be built here in my honor. I am the Lady of the Rosary. Continue always to pray the rosary every day. The war is going to end, and the soldiers will soon return to their homes. So that was a message to Our Lady to the children on October 13th. You know, it's interesting. Our Lady had promised, if you remember earlier one of the apparitions, she said that she would send a miracle, a sign, on the last uh, um, later in the later apparitions. And she, this was it. October 13th was the sign that she was going to give. And that's why so many people came from all over Portugal and Europe as Tom, you just described. Um, so Lucia had made some requests to Our Lady for cures and conversions and other intentions that people had given to her. You can imagine how many people asked Lucia, wouldn't you, to pray for them to Our Lady? Well, Mary responded with these words, some, yes, but not others. 
they must amend their lives and ask forgiveness for their sins. Again, this really reminds us of the gospel message to forgive as Jesus has told us to forgive and to make amends um, and to so that we may grow uh, in our faithfulness with Christ. Mm-hmm. Our so, late, mm-hmm. so this leads us to the, uh, to, to the miracle. And it's the only miracle ever precisely predicted as to date, time, and location. And what was probably known as the miracle of the sun, October the 13th, 1917, also became known as the day the sun danced. It was as is recorded in the, a major Portuguese paper. During the solar phenomena, the sun whirled and zigzagged, casting colors about the, uh, the crowd as it began to descend toward the earth. The 70,000 people assembled cried in terror, thinking that it was the end of the world. After about 10 minutes, the sun returned to the sky. Then a howling wind began to blow, despite the leaves of the trees remaining still. The rain-soaked people were suddenly dry of their clothes, and the ground was completely dry. Remarkable. Remarkable. The miracle of 70,000 people. And not Uh, only the 70,000 people who most of them, I would say probably majority over, you know, 90 percent at least, maybe more, were the faithful who wanted to see this miracle. But secular, secular unbelievers, unbelievers who went out of being skeptical and just curious and just wanted to see, oh, you know, let's see what really happens. Exactly. Hoping to disprove. Exactly. So they were they were um, people representing various secular newspapers and so these are the ones that wrote articles wrote and went through this article that was uh, mentioned earlier in the Portuguese newspaper went through other European newspapers throughout uh, Europe and then of course throughout the rest of the world it's amazing Our Lady of Fatima and these three children Lucia Francisco and Jacinta seen our Blessed Virgin Mary with incredible messages they received but they're given to the world to you and me today um, you know we're gonna we're gonna talk more about how are the appar- what happened after the apparitions what happened to the three children but then also how is the message of Fatima helping me today and how does it affect us today this is journeys of hope uh, our journey of hope to Fatima. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You're on the everyday journey of life, and sometimes it's tough to keep hope alive. Well, that's why Pilgrim Center of Hope is here for you. Not only does Pilgrim Center of Hope provide you programs like Journeys of Hope, but did you know you can also find other helpful media productions from Pilgrim Center of Hope on our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. Every first Friday, take an audio retreat with Jesus called Meet the Master. Every third Thursday, have a social with the saints. And our new quarterly series, Who is the Man of the Shroud, meets at the intersection of faith, true crime, science and medicine, history, art, and much more. Find it all at pilgrimcenterofhope.org or on your favorite podcast app. And keep hope alive in your daily journey. Pilgrim Center of Hope guiding people to Christ. Hello, this is Jason Nunez and Angela Cialana, both from the media department at Pilgrim Center of Hope, who produce Journeys of Hope. Would you like to honor someone special in your life and support the production of this unique weekly series? We are in need of monthly sponsors for upcoming Journeys of Hope programs to help cover some of the production costs by a donation. If you've sponsored a month of Journeys of Hope in the past, we thank you for your support. Pilgrim Center of Hope has a donation wish list, and on it, several months of upcoming Journeys of Hope programming are still needing sponsors. If you're interested, please consider selecting a month that you wish to sponsor by going to pilgrimcenterofhope.org, and under the Give menu, select Wish List. You can also choose to dedicate your donation in honor or in memory of someone special. Thank you for joining us in our mission. Now, enjoy the rest of your journey. This is Journeys of Hope. I'm Mary Jane Fox with my husband, Deacon Tom. Um, Our journey today is to Fatima, but specifically really looking at the apparitions of Fatima, Our Lady of the Rosary, that occurred to three children, Jacinta, Francisco, and Lucia, in the year of 1917, 106 years ago. So what happened after the apparitions? Well, you know, the children of Fatima were interviewed by church authorities, you can imagine, right? After the final apparition that occurred on October 13th and over 70,000 people who were assembled at this, on this day, uh, at this site where Our Lady appeared 
witness the miracle of the sun, it was called, the miracle of the sun, which they thought was the end of the world, the way the, the sun danced, zigzagged, went back and forth, and the whole, um, there were many, many recorded healings as well. So these were, they were being interviewed, their lives had completely changed, their their homes were no longer, you know, uh, simple homes. They were being they were being visited by many people from all walks of life, including including those wanting to interview them. But in the, all during that time, they remained in peace. They still had this deep peace, um, this conviction of Our Lady's message to them. I, I mean, of course, they saw the Mary, the the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. They became little missionaries for Our Lady. Well, the next year, Jacinta and Francisco both fell ill to the influenza pandemic that swept through Europe in the autumn of 1918. Francisco recovered somewhat, and there were hopes that he might become well, but he realized that he was destined to die young, and his condition worsened again. He did extreme fasting and penance, and he that never stopped him. It with continued he continued to offer up his sufferings as Our Lady requested him to do. He offered up not only his suffering as a way of consoling God for the sinfulness and ingratitude of mankind, but also in praying for the conversion of sinners. On the day of his death, which is April 4th of 1919, he received his first Holy Communion. His sister, Jacinta, was also confined to her death, I'm uh, sorry, to her bed during the long winter months. And although she recovered, she was struck down with bronchial um, pneumonia while also developing a painful abscess in her chest. But she was moved to a hospital in Orem, which is a nearby city, that summer of July 1919, where she underwent the painful treatment prescribed for her, but without much effect. She returned home in August with an open wound in her side. When it was determined she would undergo another treatment in January of 1920, she had to go to Lisbon, uh, to a hospital in Lisbon where she was diagnosed uh, there as having a severe pleurisy and diseased ribs. Her ribs became um, infected. Uh, She knew it was the last time she would see her family. She would see her cousin, Lucia. Well, she was admitted to the hospital and she underwent some painful operations to remove two ribs. Then this left her with a large wound in her side. It had to be dressed daily. It caused her great agony. On the evening of February the 20th, that same year, 1920, she died alone in her hospital bed, far from her family. What a great suffering. Her body was returned to Fatima and buried with that of her brother Francisco in the village Catholic cemetery. Until later, later, both of their bodies were exhumed, found to be incorrupt, by the way, and moved to the basilica built which, uh, in Fatima, which today is called Our Lady of the Rosary Basilica, because it was the title that Our Lady introduced herself to mm-hmm. the children. And it's just a beautiful basilica. And of course, we remember uh, visiting the, the graves of Francisco and, and Jacinta, Jacinta there in, in, the, in the church. Uh, on numerous occasions, being able to celebrate Mass in, in that basilica and to uh, enjoy the, the countryside, the, the stations of the cross, the, so many things that are so important to our, our Catholic faith and how it's still being lived out there faithfully and, and to see the, uh, the thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of pilgrims coming there to visit and, and to embrace that message that we all need to uh, uh, pray for our own conversion uh, because a conversion is a lifelong process. It's not like I've, I've arrived, I'm, perfe- I'm perfect now and I don't, I don't need to change. Uh, uh, Jesus said we must be perfect as a heavenly father is perfect. And, and we're probably not going to reach that perfection and, until uh, we maybe pass by way of pur- purgatory that are purified before we enter into the glories of, of heaven. But we have to be mindful of the importance of that process and know that 
when we offer up our sufferings, when we, when we make every effort to do what is right, what we know to be consistent with, with God's plan for us and, and, and for the church and for all of humanity, we help the whole body of Christ in that. And then we can um, uh, facilitate in our own purification, that hopefully there won't be, um, after we die, um, our, our purification will be less than, than it need, you know, than it would be without our cooperation, uh, with, with God's grace. So the, now that the, the two children have passed on and all, La Lucia is the only one that is remaining. She lived in a, a Carmelite convent in Coimbra, uh, Portugal, uh, from 1948 until her death, on February the 13th of 2005 at the age of 97. She spent her entire life after the apparition spreading the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the messages of the beautiful Lady of Light. Her cause for canonization is underway. Um, in May of 1922, Bishop uh, Correia, uh, Correia de Silva issued a pastoral letter on the subject of Fatima, indicating that he would set up a commission of inquiry. In 1930, he issued another pastoral letter on the apparitions, which after recounting the events of, of Fatima, contained the following brief but important statement. In virtue of considerations made known, and others which for reasons of brevity we omit, Humbly invoking the Holy Spirit and placing ourselves under the protection of the Most Holy Virgin, we hereby declare worthy of belief the visions of the shepherd children in Cova de Ira, parish of Fatima, in this diocese from May 13th to the 13th of October, 1917. So that was the proclamation yep. Yep. of the church that it has yep. been um, approved. So today, many pilgrims visit Fatima, as Tom and I have taken groups of pilgrims to Fatima to hear the story, to see the place of the apparition, to pray, and to understand truly the message, but more than that, to embrace a relationship with Mary, the mother of God, as she will lead us closer to her son, Jesus, as she always does when she, uh, as she did here in her apparitions to the three children. Uh, today, now Lucia's grave, uh, she is also entombed in the Basilica of Our Lady of uh, the Rosary in Fatima. So all three of them are entombed in this basilica. We can ask their intercessions. You know, uh, Jacinta and Francisco have been canonized. They're the, some of the first two children or some of the first children in the history of the church. Um, there have been others, but these are a few others. Uh, these are two others that have been canonized. We can ask their intercession for our family members. Maybe there's children that you're concerned about or your grandchildren, nieces and nephews or uh, children who are suffering that we don't know about, but we read about in situations, and we can ask Saints Jacinta and Francisco to pray for them. And of course, um, we say, Blessed Lucia, because her cause for canonization is underway. But how is it that Fatima's message can help us today? You know, Our Lady's message continues to ring true today, 106 years later. You know, Our Lady told the children, do not offend the Lord our God anymore because he is already so offended. No, I I'm, recall the statement made by Pope John Paul II when he was Cardinal Carol Waltia in, in 1976. So Cardinal Carol Waltia said, quote, we are today before the greatest combat that mankind has ever seen. I do not believe that the Christian community has completely understood it. We are today before the final struggle between the church and the anti-church, between the gospel and the anti-gospel. Quote, now this was said in 1976. It sounds like today, doesn't it? Oh, it's even worse now. Well, I mean, we could say it. We could say, yes, it is. It appears worse. And this was in 1976 when Cardinal Carroll was, it was two years later that he became Pope John Paul II. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. But in that time period, he already was seeing uh, this this reality and telling us, the faithful, the people of God, be aware. Are we aware of the struggle? That's why he asked for a new evangelization yes. back then. Uh, and there was, uh, and he started the the, the uh, youth days. 
uh, because he knew that the youth were the hope of the future. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he did so many things to help us to address that. But, you know, there's a special relationship between uh, Pope John Paul II and, and Fatima that uh, when the, the attempted assassination, when, when he was shot, it, when he went to the hospital, the, uh, the doctors were amazed that how the bullet, it, although it, it, was, it was like headed for um, uh, organs that were critical, that it seemed like the, the bullet was redirected so that it didn't cause his death. And so uh, John Paul II believed that it was through the intercession of Our Lady of Fatima uh, that his life was saved. And so he, he went to Fatima to, to give thanks, and that bullet uh, that pierced him is in the crown of Our Lady of Fatima that's taken in procession on the 13th of, the, of each month from May through uh, October. Right. So, and you can see that crown today at the Museum of Fatima. Uh, sh and it's quite amazing, the stories. It is true. You know, we, when we think about it, you know, this apparition that occurred 106 years ago, there are so many stories related, not only people's healings, conversions, uh, the descendants of those family members who saw the miracle of the sun on October of 1917, that story continues among family members in Portugal today. And the fact that, um, again, going back to this reality of what John Paul II or Cardinal Carroll said in 1976, and Tom, you were reminding us that he he really proclaimed a new evangelization for this effort of seeing this, uh, of um, redeeming or to sanctify and to be in the midst of the struggle, but with hope, with hope and with the good news. Right. Uh, because uh, again, some some of the, the struggles that he was aware of that are, uh, I believe, even more uh, pronounced in these t present times, are uh, spiritual warfare. Uh, first of these, of course, is is blasphemy, uh, which are sins that are directed against God and Our Lady, the angels and the saints, and those things that are sacred because they are associated with honor and worship of God. Such offenses uh, express actual and even indirect hatred of God. Uh, these sins must be overcome by the lively faith of believers, along with their authentic love of God and neighbor. Again, the, the two greatest commandments that we are commanded, and not suggested, we are commanded to love the Lord our God with all our mind, heart, soul, and strength on our neighbor and ourself. Because... Uh, every, all love and, and everything good comes from God. And we want to be able to love to our potential as a creature of God. We need to be connected to the source of that love, which, which is God. Without that connection, there will be something lacking in our love of God and, and love of neighbor. And in the uh, St. Paul's words, he says, Do not over, be overcome by evil, but become over evil with good. And, and that's for each of us. Uh, that really sums up the, the message of Our Lady of Fatima. Where does that uh, scripture come that's from, That's from Tom? Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 21. That's a, that's a good verse to really remember each yeah. time. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And evil that... takes all different forms. Mm -hmm. You know, some things are, uh, not all things are evil. I mean, uh, all, all sicknesses, uh, some of are just from natural causes, but some, you know, we are, we're not only material beings, we are also spiritual beings and our health is spiritual as well as it is material. And if we are not uh, taking care of our spiritual health, then there's probably uh, material consequences for the for bodily consequences for not taking care of our spiritual health. So uh, that's why we need to be really aware of how important it is to, to be connected to God and, and all the means that he's given us through the church um, to be connected to him. As he says, come to me, all you labor and burden, and I will give you rest. That it's in the things that we uh, have no control over that we need to immediately turn to God to seek that which only he can, can give us. So remember God's love is stronger than the world's hatred. Our Lady's message in Fatima will invigorate our faith and love if we only open ourselves to it. So we're at this time of called the culture of death, and there are sins against life, such as abortion, abortion euthanasia, embryonic stem cell uh, research, 
assisted suicide, and the whole culture of death. Add to that list murder, physical abuse, gang wars, ethnic and racial cleansing, and all other violent crimes that come from hatred in our hearts. And then... I know this offends God, and it, it offends yeah. us. It offends me and you. You know, uh, when we hear about it, uh, we read about it, and we can pray. And this is again where we offer up our our little our little sufferings, our big sufferings, but you know, our 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 prayer, and 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 still always with peace and hope. Um, and another thing is the attack on the family, you know, which is a, a cause of the cult, another cause of the culture of death, which was fostered by communism. Really, it's the attack on the traditional family. The family is the only place where the uh, weak, whether they be very young, very sick or very old, are cared for by those abound to love, uh, to them by through love. The family is the building block of our society. If families are strong, the society will be strong. If they're weak, then the society will be weak. Uh, so, you know, Father Patrick Payton, the, 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 the priest the that is priest. called the rosary priest yeah. and he lived in the 20th century, he says, you know, families that pray together, stay together, sounds simple, but it's so powerful. You know, when children see their parents pray, when ch children see their parents love each other and, pr and worship, mm -hmm. they also follow along. And there are so many attacks uh, on the family. Uh, you know, technology is a, is a, a wonderful thing. But it can also be abused, just like any any good thing uh, can be abused. But technology has had a uh, a very in in some way, times some places has had a very negative impact upon the family, of how um, uh, maybe television programming. We know that there are very uh, immoral uh, programming. Um, Children have access on on their on their cell phones to things that are destructive. Uh, right. So that the, there really needs to be a, a strong uh, supervision in the the, in the home, and home uh, must be a place of prayer and it, security. It, it, yes, right, security and and peace, and you know, and it's possible. It's possible. I know there are many situations where it's a mystery, and we there's no you know. It's just very difficult. Life is a mystery. Life's a challenge. But life is also beautiful when we embrace Christ. And when we embrace Christ, we embrace the cross. And the cross is both yeah. sweet and 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 it can be pretty pretty uh, challenging. But, but there are some there's some practical things that we can do. Exactly, we, we have a, a, a place. Our, every home should be. We should if, if it's a Catholic home, we should know that it is. And you know, when we enter with a crucifix and and images and having the uh, our Bible handy and so forth to enter into prayer. Yeah, no, true. And speaking of prayer, I think that's really the, one of the primary messages of Our Lady Fatima and that could help us today. You know, she really emphasized, um, her message can be emphasized in three words, prayer, penance, and reparation. And really pretty much, those are, that's the life of a Christian. I mean, Christians, we're filled with with peace and joy and as John Paul II said the 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 song of the Christian is alleluia right it is so true it is alleluia but prayer is the great means of connecting us with God and having that intimacy with him it's our foundation it means living with him being united with him being one with him and prayer from the heart can lead us to that relationship with God and our lady gives us the rosary our ladies gives us the rosary is our connection with our lady a beautiful connection Connection, right, that we can hold in our hands. It's tangible. As she says, pray, pray a great deal. Pray the rosary every day. She even added a prayer to pray after each decade. You know, oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Beautiful prayer Our Lady teaches us. That prayer, when we pray that prayer, we are we are, are affecting souls. And of course, Tom, you know, penance and reparation, you did put light into that. And she... Uh, Our Lady mentioned, you know, prayer. She did mention prayer, but penance and reparation. And um, again, the the penance and and reparation is sacrificing and offering up our our little uh, sufferings. Everything from, you know, the things that even making the proper choices. You know, I uh, refraining from, you know, 
buying something you really want but can't really afford it, and then you, don't need <laughs> you know, something you really don't need. It. I've learned through my years of experience, especially as a woman, <laughs> you know, to to really be able to my be mindful of that and say, okay, Lord, I need to really be more mindful of my responsibility. And see, all of this makes a big difference. Yeah. And then, of course, Lucia wrote down the, th the third secret of Fatima, which reveals the call to penance. Our Lady radiated towards... Uh, well, that's right. She she did say, she did talk about um, the about oh, penance. It was the angel that right. Our Lady radiated towards the angel from her right hand, pointing to the earth, uh, uh, and and the angel cried out in a loud voice, "Penance, penance, penance!" And Saint John Paul II reflected on this message uh, when he in his uh, World Day of the Sick, the insistent invitation of Mary Most Holy to penance is nothing but manifestation of her maternal concern for the fate of the human family in need of conversion and forgiveness. Yes, that's good. That's true. Because there's a lot that happened, um, again, and a lot that we can build on on those messages of Fatima. And John Paul II has written extensively, not only prayers, reflections, but um, about the, the his... his um, his own personal reflections on the message of Fatima, as Tommy, you described about his attempted suicide and how he was saved, he believes, through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary. Um, there are so many books about Fatima and about Fatima's message and Our Lady herself on the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So much. We're so blessed as Catholic Christians to have much to read, much spiritual reading. There is one book that we do recommend. I've uh, read it. It's really very good. It's written by Father Andrew Apostoli. Father Andrew Apostoli wrote this book called Fatima for Today, The Urgent Marian Message of Hope That I Have Taken, the message, the, the, the Fatima message to heart. Again, Fatima for Today, The Urgent Marian Message of Hope That I Have Taken, the me Fatima message to heart. Now, that book is listed on our website on pilgrimcenterofhope.org. And it is a good book to relate uh, Fatima's message to our daily lives and the hope that Mary's message brings us today. And there is just a, a portion of the book or a couple of um, sentences I wanted to share uh, with you from this book that is quite good. Uh, it's, and I'll just want to quote it, um, share this with you because I think it's really gives you an idea about the book. It begins with this quote, the Blessed Virgin Mary plays a pivotal role in the great struggle between good and evil, between her divine son and her disciples and Satan and his followers. The Blessed Virgin Mary is a central figure in God's plan of salvation. She plays a major role, second only to her son in the work of redeeming the world. This role involved her in continuous conflict with Satan. As Fatima, at Fatima, however, Our Lady assured us that the final victory would be hers. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. End of quote. And in that book, he not only just gives us a brief uh, summary of what happened in Fatima, but uh, the messages, but the lives of the children in more in depth and how, again, um, the message can bring us hope. Father Andrew Apostoli's book, uh, that title can be found, if you want to get that book, it can be found on our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. Well, this brings us to um, the uh, jewel for the journey. And the jewel for the journey today is from Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. He tells us, Mary's greatness consists in the fact that she wants to magnify God, not herself. And this is something that, Tom, I think as Catholics, we need to be reminded. I know we hear other people say, well, I go directly to Jesus. Praise be God. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, we also have a Heavenly Mother. We belong to a family of God, the Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Mother, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Master, uh, the one who died for us. We are blessed to be able to be in the midst of this family of God as a as a member. Yeah, the, and Mary had a significant role to play in, in uh, salvation history. And the, in the Magnificat, she, she said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. As she does say, all ages will call me blessed because what God has done for her, through her. So, uh, yes, that's, that's uh, the scripture itself. As she 
has been known through the through the centuries to be able to assist us and help us on our journey, help us to remain close to her son Jesus. And I invite you, Tom and I invite you to take the rosary in your hand, take up the rosary in your hand, um, and pray the rosary. Pray with you, your family, your spouse, your friends. Uh, if you need a rosary, if you need rosaries, call us at Pilgrim Center of Hope, and we'll be happy, happy to give you complimentary rosaries. So, Tom, would you lead us in prayer, please? Yes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Most Holy Virgin Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, you are pleased to appear to the children of Fatima and reveal a glorious message. We implore you, inspire in our hearts a fervent love for the recitation of the rosary by meditating on the mysteries of the redemption that are recalled therein May we obtain the graces and virtues, virtues that we ask through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us ask uh, Blessed Lucia and Saints Jacinta and Francisco to pray for us, to pray for us each day, right, as we continue to walk our pilgrim journey with the Lord Jesus, with Our Lady to our destination, the heavenly Jerusalem. I invite you to learn more about Pilgrim Center of Hope and our evangelization mission by visiting our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. Our mission encompasses conferences, parish presentations, media outreach, and pilgrimages. Again, our website, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. You can share this journey of hope with others by going to our website or your favorite podcast. Thank you for joining us.